Hello, I am David Zanone, a technical marketing engineer here at Infoblox. Today we are here to talk about Infoblox's new integration with Checkpoint's next generation firewall. First, we will see an overview of the Infoblox integration with Checkpoint's next generation firewall. Then we will explain and demonstrate some use cases for this integration. After that, we will see an overview of how to configure the integration along with a brief walkthrough of how to set everything up. Finally, to wrap things up, we will examine the benefits of the integration and conclude with a short review. Now let's see an overview of the Infoblox integration with Checkpoint's next generation firewall. With Infoblox's outbound API and Checkpoint's next generation firewall, we are now able to respond faster to network changes with the help of Infoblox's ecosystem license. Infoblox and Checkpoint's next generation firewall come together to enable administrators to efficiently manage assets and automate DNS security. This empowers administrators with the ability to stop attacks without direct intervention and therefore increase the ROI of both products. Now let us look at the first use case, asset management. This use case demonstrates how Infoblox adds new objects to Checkpoint's next generation firewall. First, an administrator creates a new host record on the Infoblox grid. The host creation then triggers a notification that delivers detailed information about the event to the Checkpoint device via Infoblox's outbound API. Finally, the host record is visible within the Checkpoint next generation firewall. Firewall policies can then be easily applied by the administrator to specific devices, networks, or ranges. Let's look at this use case in a live environment. First, let's create a host record. For this demo, we will use the hostname testv4 in the zone .poc.infoblox.local. Once we have waited a moment, let's refresh the page. Now let's view the inherited extensible attribute, CP Asset Timestamp. This extensible attribute shows a timestamp of when this host record was added to the Checkpoint Next Generation Firewall. To view the new host record on the Checkpoint device, let's navigate to Network Objects, Groups, Network Groups, and CP Asset Group. As we can see, the host record testv4.poc.infoblox.local has been created via Infoblox's outbound API within the Checkpoint device. Now let us look at the next use case that involves a DNS security event. This use case demonstrates how Infoblox adds an infected host to a security group within Checkpoint's next generation firewall. First, an infected host sends a malicious request to the Infoblox grid, then the malicious request triggers an RPZ rule within the Infoblox grid, effectively blocking the request. The security event also triggers a notification prompting the Infoblox grid to send information regarding the event to the Checkpoint Next Generation Firewall. The device is then placed in the Checkpoint security group where it can be quarantined with preventative policies that have been applied by administrators. Now let's see the security event take place in a live environment. To emulate an infected host, let's perform a dig request to the domain name example.com. Let's send this request to the Infoblox Gridmaster at 172.0.0.3. As we can see, the Infoblox Grid has been configured to block this request and return a non-existent domain. We can also see that the local RPZ rule has been triggered. Let's now observe the action taken by the Infoblox Grid. The device named Linux that made the malicious request is located at IP address 172.0.0.101. Let's select the device and scroll down. Observe the extensible attribute CP Security Timestamp has been updated. This shows us when the device was quarantined by the Checkpoint device via information that was delivered by Infoblox's outbound API. To observe the device within Checkpoint, let's navigate to Network Objects, Groups, Network Groups, and finally CP Security Group. As we can see, the device Linux has been effectively quarantined by being added to the Network Group CP Security Group within the Checkpoint device. Now we will go over a brief overview of how to set everything up. First, go to the Infoblox Community website and download the templates that are required for the integration. Next, Set up the Checkpoint Next Generation Firewall for the integration. Add an API-only user 
and add both asset and security network groups to the checkpoint device. Then configure the Infoblox grid for the integration. Add extensible attributes, notifications, an outbound endpoint, and upload the integration templates. All of these steps are covered in the Infoblox and Checkpoint Integration Deployment Guide located on the Infoblox Community website. Please note that you must have the Infoblox Ecosystem Gridwide license to fully utilize this integration. Now let's go over the configuration process in a live environment. First, within the Checkpoint Gaia web interface, ensure that the Infoblox device that is making the outbound API calls has access to Checkpoint's management API. View all GUI clients under the User Management header located in the left panel. Add the IP address of the Infoblox device that is making outbound API calls. In our case, the IP of the Gridmaster that is making outbound API calls is 172.0.0.3. Then, within the Checkpoint Smart Console, verify that any client that has access to the Checkpoint GUI also has access to the Management API. Ensure that Automatic Start is enabled, then verify that the setting All IP Addresses that can be used for GUI clients is checked. Then, click OK. Note that we will need to restart the Management API, but before we do that, we must publish all changes. Now let's restart the Management API. Back within the Checkpoint Gaia web interface, click on Open Terminal located at the top of the page. Log in with an administrative account, then type in Expert to elevate permissions. Once logged in to the Expert account, type in API Restart. Once the API Restart has completed, the Checkpoint device will accept API calls from the Infoblox grid. Next, let's create a user that has the ability to create objects via the Checkpoint API. Within the Checkpoint Smart Console, click on Permission Profiles and click New to create a new permission profile. Be sure to give the permission profile a name you'll recognize. Next, deselect all options except for Write to Common Objects and Management API Login. Next, click on Administrators underneath the Permissions and Administrators header. Then click on the New button to create a new administrator. Be sure to give the administrator account a name you'll recognize. Create a password and deselect the option that forces the user to change their password at next login. Then under Permissions, get the new administrative account, the permission profile that we just created. Then, once a new account has been created, click Publish to finalize the changes. In this instance, the administrative account Infoblox will be used to create objects within Checkpoint via Infoblox's Outbound API. Now let's create the network groups that are required for this integration. Expand the Objects pane and click New. Then click Network Group in the menu that is revealed. Create two new groups, CP underscore asset group and CP underscore security group. Please note that these names are case sensitive. To finalize the creation of the new network groups, click publish at the top of the window. Now to view the newly created network groups, click on network objects, groups, and network groups. As we can see, the new network groups are now listed. Now within the Infoblox grid, click on Administration, then Extensible Attributes. The extensible attributes that begin with CP have been added for this integration. The extensible attribute CP Security Timestamp acts as a timestamp showing when a security event has occurred on a device. The extensible attribute CP Security Sync defines if security events are to be added to Checkpoint or not. The extensible attribute CP Asset Timestamp records a timestamp that shows when an asset was last synced with the Checkpoint device. The extensible attribute CP Asset Sync defines if assets are to be added to the Checkpoint device or not. And finally, the extensible attribute CP Add by Host Name defines if host records are to be added by name or not. Next, let's view the templates that are utilized for this integration. Listed here are the templates that are triggered and used by the outbound endpoint during specific events. Shown here are the settings of the template Checkpoint Assets. All templates are in a JSON format and are tethered to events that are defined by notifications. Now let's view the outbound endpoint. Listed are the settings for the outbound endpoint. 
Note the Infobox admin account that we just created in the checkpoint device for API calls. Also note the admin account used for WAPI calls. This account has permission to make changes to Infobox objects such as extensible attributes via templates when they are triggered. Now let's view the session management settings. The listed templates deliver session information and parameters to the checkpoint API. Note the log level has been set to debug. This setting can assist with the testing or troubleshooting of the templates and or up an endpoint configuration if needed. Please note that debug should not be used in production environments and therefore it is suggested to change this setting once the integration has been fully deployed and is in working order. If you ever need to view these logs, they can be accessed via clicking on the View Debug Log button located next to the outbound endpoint. Finally, let's view the notifications that are used by this integration. Notifications act as a link between templates, events, and the outbound endpoint. Shown is the configuration of the notification CP network IPv4. This notification prompts the template checkpoint assets to add a new network to the checkpoint device when this type of event occurs within the default network view. Now let's review the benefits of this integration. Together, Infoblox and Checkpoint create a powerful tandem offering time and money saving benefits. This integration also benefits network security and incident response teams with increased threat visibility. Finally, this integration offers automation for tasks that are time sensitive. Now let's review what we saw in this video. First, we saw two use cases for this integration. One, for asset synchronization between Infoblox and Checkpoint. Then, we saw a DNS security event that was mitigated by the synchronization of information between devices. We also briefly went over how to configure the integration. And to finish everything up, we covered the benefits of the integration. Thank you for your time viewing this video. All documentation regarding the Infoblox and Checkpoint integration is located on the Infoblox community website at community.infoblox.com. If you have any other concerns, questions, or comments, you can find myself or other Infoblox experts at the Infoblox community website.